What's up guys we're here in the oss wilson audio labs we have something special for you what is this let's check it out all right guys so at the time of this video this amp was 180 dollars with seven percent off as well unbelievable that it was that reasonably priced i couldn't i thought it was just going to be a joke honestly so i can't wait for you guys to see how this amp performs all right, guys, here we have the Slayer MD. What's in the box? What's in the bag here? You can see we have the base remote. Looks just like the one on the other Bully amplifier that we tested recently. Got that really horrible potentiometer. Has a power LED and uses the RJ11 style connection. We also have some mounting screws. And then we have the good old manual. This is the BP Slayer 3K. Slayer MD. Lots of slaying going on. You big dummy! There is the specs. Supposedly these numbers are RMS. 1400 at 4 ohms, 2100 at 2 ohms, and 3000 at 1 ohm. 0.5% THD. Let's look at the amp. All right, so here is the amp. If you can tell, that's more of a silver finish or, or kind of a anodized silverish gray versus being the white like the tar amps, which it kind of looked like I thought it was gonna mimic. But let's check this one side here. You can see the input. It has a bass boost, a high pass filter, low pass filter, a gain, the bass remote, power clip, and protect LEDs and a single speaker output. Looks like eight gauge will fit in there. There's a fan here on this end. Let's flip it around. And see we have some beefy, those are one alt inputs for power and ground. It looks like they're spaced far enough apart where we can use dual inputs, which we will, and remote, and that's it. We'll open it up here in a little bit after we test it see what it looks like on the inside but let's check out the dimensions first nine inches by nine inches 230 millimeters by 228 millimeters so it's pretty much a square and as far as the thickness goes 2.7 inches or 68.5 millimeters look at that you don't really ever see amps that say rms 3000 watts on them at the time i purchased this it was 180 bucks on amazon so if it does 3,000 watts, 180 bucks. This is a value leader for sure. Let's uh, hook it up and find out. All right, now we're going to fire up the good old SMD DeMore Engineering Amplifier Dyno so we can do our test. Before we do that, make sure you check the video description and pick up some Wilson Audio merch. Slap me a thumbs up. Greatly appreciated as always. First up, we're going to do the 4 ohm test. The amplifier is rated 1,400 watts. We assume 14.4 volts. Let's check it out. This goes up to 1% total harmonic distortion. And 1307, we're pretty close. Not quite there, but uh, pretty close. Again, the voltage dropped just a little bit under the 14.4. So let's switch it over to the uncertified mode, which takes us up to the clipping point. Again, the test is at 40 hertz. And yeah, we're just, you know, not very far away. Pretty close. I'm gonna give it a pass. 1325 watts. 14.12 volts. Now let's uh, switch it to the dynamic test. Sends a 40 hertz pulse tone into the amp. 
And again, we're still right around 1300, so it appears rating the amp at 1300 watts would have been a little bit better at 4 ohms. Uh, didn't quite get to 1400, but of course our voltage is a little bit less. Efficiency-wise, 80%. That's good. And what we like to see with Class D amps. Next up, we'll try 2 ohms. Amplifiers rated 2100 watts. And let's see what we get here. Certified test. 2,049 watts. I call that a pass as well. So let's switch to the uncertified mode, which will take us up to the clipping point. And here we go, counting, counting. And yes, we beat the 2,100 watts. 2,164, 13.73. All right, let's change the mode again to the dynamic power mode. And once again, we beat the rated power, 2100 watts plus 2122 watts at 13.64 volts. So good job, Bully. Wow, $108 amp, still unbelievable. 77% efficient, so pretty good overall. Now let's try the one ohm test. It's rated 3,000 watts for $180 with 7% off too. Certified test. Ah, close. 2,875, but our voltage dropped to 14. If we had 0.4 more, I guarantee you we would have done 3,000 watts. So now let's try the uncertified test, which takes us up to the clipping point. And you better believe it. That's right, 3,000 watts plus 3,026. Big D is a smiling if you can't tell. Wow, blown away. Ultra, ultra super good value here for the win. All right, let's try the dynamic test. Send a pulse into the amp. Look at this. The lights are dimming. 3,200 watts plus from a $180 amp. Are you kidding me? I can't believe it. But it's true, because it's right here. Wow. Efficiency, 68%. Not too bad, not great, not excellent, but not too bad overall. Now the results are scary good, especially for $180 a cent was at the time of purchase. You can pause this if you'd like to see it up close. But if you've already watched up until this point, you've already seen all them tests, so you don't even have to worry about that. But you can pause it, you know, do a screenshot, you want to print it off, whatever, save it for your records. But next up, we're going to hook up the Subvard Subwoofers. See how this amp works? Do it bump though? Let's find out. Just a warning, there may be some rattling. Let's try a little woofer test here from Boos. We about had those Savards jump out of the box. Holy crap. Let's try that woofer test in slow-mo. Uh, you know we love three kinds of bass. You ready?
and some silicon base from Base Syndicate. I love you too. Yeah, boy. After pounding the subwoofers for 30 minutes or so, it is cool to the touch. I don't feel any extra heat. I just disconnected it. I'm gonna flip it over. We're gonna check out the guts and we'll do another thermal of the insides to see what it looks like. All right, so we'll take the four screws off the bottom here and we can pop the amp open. And yeah, it looks like a uh, tar amps. And here is the thermal imaging. It may be hard for you to see that one spot there but the highest temperature I noticed on the transformer, 54 degrees Celsius is 129 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's not that hot. And again, this was after slamming the subwoofers for 30 minutes plus at high volumes. And that usually will heat up an amp. So I was impressed with the thermal management here. I think it did good overall with that. And again, just the layout of the amp. It has the rail capacitors here, 160 volt, 2200 microfarad kind of the no-name brand, and then for the filtering, 25-volt, 4700 microfarad. And yeah, I mean, these are full bridge, but works okay. The good stuff, unbelievable value. does have the variable subsonic filter. You can run it full range if you want. It has 1.0 inputs. Yay. It slammed those subwoofers, if you couldn't tell. It does include a bass remote, even though it's a cheesy, cheap one. It does include it. And for the most part, it did rated power at clipping, which is unreal. Could be better. Reliability is really unknown. Full bridge design for some people is a negative. For me, it's not. It has a single speaker output. It would be nice to have two. The base knob has cheap feel. And of course, it has cheap internal components because the price is cheap. At least it was at the time of purchase. The other thing to remember is make sure you have the electrical to support a 3000 watt amp. It does you no good purchase a 3000 watt amp if you're using stock electrical and you can't support this much power so make sure you take that into account thanks as always for watching check me out at patreon.com slash old school stereo get early access to videos behind the scenes all that fun kind of stuff special thanks to Stuart, travis jesus tomcat this is big d i'm out of here All right, let's check out the power on this woofer test. Absolutely destroying those subs. <laughs> Holy crap, I cannot believe it.